guys, welcome to another Tenant 10. Today is Tuesday's Tenant 10 for July 25th of 2023. Hey guys, I'm Tim. Hit that like button, we'd really appreciate it. And y'all, we put out daily content here on the Mr. Maple Show about Jappy's Maples. Make sure you're subscribed. Check us out on your favorite podcast platform. We put out a weekly podcast. And always make sure you're shopping with us on mrmaple.com. Today, we're gonna talk about 10 trees of the 20 trees we're getting listed today at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on mrmaple.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. We really appreciate our international community. We can't ship to you guys, but I really appreciate you subscribing and being part of that Maple Mafia. Uh, join that live chat too. If you haven't already noticed, there's a live chat going on when these air every single day at 9 a.m. Eastern, and there's a ton of fun people in there. We've got a great Maple community going on. So let's get to it. First here on the table, we've got Koi. You jumped right to the middle. Acer palmatum koi back on the table, y'all. Guys, koi is just an amazing plant. In the springtime, this puts on some really nice bronze colors. You get some yellow new growth during the summer on this plant. It has more of a cup foliage than your typical Macaulay Tabusa. It's a newer selection by the Area 51 collection. Those the guys got good stuff. The crazy guys at Mr. Maple. You know, they got, they got some pretty cool plants. Koi is going to sell out fast, so make sure you check out very quickly. It doesn't hold it for you until you complete the checkout process. Now, Koi wasn't just selected for colors. This has a very regal appearance to it. It's extremely dense. Dare I say it, almost even denser than Makawa Yetsubusa itself. It has a nice, vigorous shape to it. It also has a ruffle to the leaf and exceptional fall color. I think the fall color typically exceeds Makawa in my garden. It's oranges to reds as well, but you can get bold, bold orange on this. It is an excellent tree to be growing. Exceptionally heat tolerant. This is gonna work zones five through nine and full sun up to zone eight. Uh, I think once you get this one out there, you're gonna find out all the added benefits of Koi. It's a really fun one, uh, and, it's, and the colors are excellent, but I think it has a lot of cool traits other than the colors as well. So we just gotta jump around and get them excited. Here's Naguri Nishki. Boom, Naguri Nishki the, on the 10 at 10. The batwing maple. One of the batwing maples is back again. We got Naguri Nishki. Tiny sizes on these, right? Oh, some tiny sizes. I mean, these are giant one gallons for Naguri Nishki. And they're really bringing the summer heat with some really, really bright white variegation. I love this plant. This is uh, an amazing tree. Acer pictums are so colorful, especially those variegated ones. I have this one in full sun in my zone 6B and it doesn't skip a beat here. I think some of you hotter zone people are gonna need to put this one in a little bit more late day shade because it's consistently bright white. And uh, even more consistent than uh, Ukigumo. This one leaves out every year for me with bold white coloration. Uh, really a showstopper there in the garden. You can pair those kind of shades of white with anything in the garden because it looks completely different. I remember when I first saw this plant in Japan. We were at World Maple Park and we were walking around Masa Yoshiano and I was like, what in the world is that? It is so white. And then later we also saw this at Kobayashi Mumiji Inn and every time I saw it, my heart just fluttered. And it was a plant like I was like, I've got to have this. I got to have this. Shortly thereafter, we, we got this tree and got it in production. And then Mark Wethington went to Japan and he emailed me and said, Tim, have you seen this tree before? He's the director of the J.C. Rouse and Arboretum. And he said, it's called Naguri Nishiki. Do you have it? And I said, yeah, we got it. We got it. Now it's your chance to get one too. You can have it too. All right, what we got next there, Tim, on your side? Well, let's just jump around here. We got some second Okigon. <laughs> this is going to be the most confusing 10 at 10 ever. We've got Acer Savolianum, second Okigon an amazing weeping form of Seaboldianum. Yeah, this is a selection that was found in the wild in Japan. It's got some height to it. It gets some height to it about 10 feet in 10, 15 years, but it arches and cascades downward and has a unique weeping habit that is very unusual and very different for an Acer Seaboldianum. Ah, oh, this one's so fun. Great fall colors too, typically bold reds. I've even had some pink red, had a little bit of orange some years. Exceptionally heat tolerant as well. I mean, this is, you know, one of those more cold tolerant plants, but this work zones five through nine. Uh, really cool plant for its overall structure. Think of it as a large tree with a big weeping habit to it. So it's not gonna get large in its height, but it certainly develops that density to it. We have one of the oldest ones in America at our nursery at Maplewood Gardens. I think it's probably seven foot now. Yeah, and it is amazing. It is spectacular. And the original one in Japan isn't too much bigger than it. I mean, I've seen it in some of the Maple Society proceedings. It was written about how is this amazing new plant. And then I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. And one of our friends brought it back from Japan. We got it in production here at Mr. Maple. And this is just a plant that is spectacular. Which plant you wanna to go to next, Matt? I'll start down here with Acer Shirasaki. Oh, head fake. 
Baby Ghost. Baby Ghost. Baby Ghost on the table, guys. One of the OG Ghost series. Gotta get your baby a Baby Ghost. Baby Ghost is one of the rarest of the Ghost series. It's one of the shortest growing of the Ghost series, too. Gives you some nice pink purples. Sounds kind of creepy. I think a Baby Ghost would scare the hell out of me. <laughs> and it has some nice semi-arching habits to it. Great for containers, great for small places in the garden. But again, this is one of the smallest of the Ghost series. Ah, awesome plant. I love this one for its pink red in that springtime. It really brings it. It is a smaller overall tree. I want a lot of people need to complete the ghost series. There ain't nothing scary about this one. You're gonna love it in your landscape. All right, guys. Benny Shishihenga is back. You might know, uh, we're named Mr. Maple because that was the nickname for my dad. Back in the day, people called him Mr. Maple. Well, our symbol is the Benny Shishihenga because that's Mama Maple's favorite plant. Yeah, it has some really nice pink variegation. And mom just loved the pink. And because of that, every single time we'd go to a garden show, she'd sell out of Benny Shishihinga first among all the other plants. She'd come help us sell plants. And we'd always sell out of Benny Shishihinga because mom would say, now you want a pink tree, don't you? You want a pink tree. And this, <laughs> this one, one just speaks to you. This one just speaks to you, exactly. <laughs> it has some really nice pink variegation around the, uh, around the edges of the leaf. It makes a nice upright tree and gives it some protection from the hot afternoon sun. But this is one of those I call it like a floral Japanese maple. You want to plant it somewhere up close. It's going to grow a little dense. It's going to be a little slow to grow at first, and you're going to really appreciate that variegation. Hey, my mom loves it. Your mom's going to love it too. So get her a Benny Shishihenga. The name means red and changeful, and it's really more of a pink coloration. We've still got a little pink going on right now in the summer, but what this one does is it leaves out bright pink on green, and then it often goes to some butterfly shades. So you'll have, I've had people say, I think my Benny Shishihenga reverted to butterfly. And I said, that's what they all do. So you, you didn't revert. It's always gonna go to more of a cream on green. All right, next up here on the table, we've got Gable's Glory. Gable's Glory, back in stock on Mr. Maple, guys. This is a selection by Larry Gable. And this thing is really putting on its display. This is what you can actually see it doing during the summer. It's Gable in all of its glory. It's getting this sort of yellow color down low but then it's putting on this unique shade of like brick red, pink red on top. Some people call this the chameleon maple and they're not lying. It changes, it does tons of crazy colors. This one I've had to be neon orange. Uh, like the most common thing is that, that weird metallic-y red over top of yellow. It's not uncommon to get really yellow older growth to bronze older growth. It changes constantly. I've had some incredible orange fall colors. Uh, it really is one of the funkiest color patterns in all maples. You know, put this, this with that Naguri Nishiki, uh, you're gonna get some crazy contrast. I know whenever Matt and I were at Dell's Nursery and we were you know, getting Lillian's Jewel for the first time, Cotton Candy, Mama Fu, Patsy, and some of those really cool plants. Cotton Candy, sweet and low. This was one of those plants that he was like, you gotta leave today with this plant. And I was like, okay. And it was more of a red color at the time, I didn't know why, and the more I grown this tree, the more yeah. and more you appreciate it. I literally think I got it home, put it in a three gallon, and then the next spring I went out there and was like, what in the heck is this thing? Like, it is crazy. And I've been a fan ever since. We've been getting this thing into production as much as possible ever since that day. Yeah, awesome, amazing, super cool plant. All right, guys, I guess I'm gonna go with Acer Shirasawa and I'm Jordan on Matt's side of the table. <laughs> Dude came over to my side of the table, but the battleship it and sunk. Jordan is incredible. This one is one that brings that neon yellow to that spring garden. It's not uncommon to even have some yellow if you're giving it a little bit of morning sun late summer. It's actually an incredibly vigorous tree as well with those large Acer, Acer Shirasawatam style leaves. Y'all, these are some really large one gallons of Jordan as well. And you're gonna love this plant. Give it some slight protection from the hot afternoon sun. You can grow it in full sun in some areas too. I mean, this thing is just electric yellow. These have been in more of a cold frame setting, so they're not as green. I mean, they're a little more green right now than they normally would be. But this is going to be a yellow tree you're going to really enjoy. Oh, neon yellows in the early spring. Bold reds to like pink reds in the fall. Really cool colors on this one. We even had some oranges in the fall, but reds are the typical color for this one. Check out our full specimen breakdown. We show you a massive one of these. It's one of our original stock plants. It's now at a friend's garden in Flat Rock. So go check out our full cultivar breakdown of Jordan. And you can see this one in its full splendor in a very mature size. Now, one thing that's unique about this plant is it is believed to be in palmatum ex shirasolinum or shirasolinum ex palmatum. The new growth can look more palmatum-like on Jordan while the older growth will look more and more like shirasolinum arium. All right, let's get it, man. Abigail Rose time, y'all. 
Abigail Rose back in stock, always popular. You know, this is that dwarf Higashiyama style named by Harold Johnston down in Alabama. Abigail Rose brings it. I mean, they're gonna be green right now. So full disclosure, if you're looking at these coming out of a greenhouse, just like the Higashiyamas we talked about last week, they're gonna be fairly green during the summer in a greenhouse. You're gonna get better color on this one when it leaves out slowly in your yard. But this is one that doesn't revert, so it doesn't lose it. But you are gonna be a little greener, especially if you're looking at this bad boy in July. Yeah, I'd say it's tight, dense, compact, fairly heat tolerant for some of the Higashiyama styles. It is a selection by the same guy, Harold Johnson, who introduced Benny Sheehan, like Matt said. The original Abigail Rose is down at Colonel Parker's, who was a good friend of Harold Johnson's. We got to go see that plant. It was about 40 years old, and it was only about six feet tall. And it was taking that, that heat there in Alabama and still looking good. We actually got to see it in the fall. And as this one matures, you get even more variegation on the older growth really consistently. It really is. And this is a plant you're going to really enjoy in a container. You're going to enjoy it in small spaces. It gives you that Higashiyama style, but with that sort of tighter compact habit. This one sells out so quickly. And I would blame it a little bit on the resurgence of the name Abigail. I have two different friends with daughters named Abigail, and they always hit me up for Abigail Rose. I've got, I've got one to both of them now. But look at the size of these one gallons. Oh, there's excellent size one gallons. A showstopper, whether you're gonna put it in the container garden or in the ground, makes the perfect small container garden though. Guys, we got Acer Japonicum Yamakagi. We are bringing it with the full moon maples. We got another Acer Japonicum Yamakagi, that mountain shadow is what this one translates as. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, this is my favorite fall color Japanese maple. But you gotta realize too, when Matt and I made our very first trip to Oregon, we got to see this plant for the very first time. And we went to visit Don Schmidt Nursery at Jim Schmidt's house. And literally he had one of these in his backyard. And as we pulled in, I looked at this name of the subdivision, it said Mountain Shadows, which Yamakagi translates as Mountain Shadows. It turns out Jim's neighbor had this plant, it was a chance seedling that they had, and they introduced it at Don Schmidt Nursery. And when we got to visit it, I got to see this plant in fall color, and I was just sitting there taking photos with my hand beside this thing because the leaves get to be like a dinner plate size, which is just outrageous. It's not uncommon to have neon yellows and reds, sometimes even orange on this plant. The, the neon red and yellow stage is one of my favorite. Uh, that, that huge leaf makes the perfect palette for that. Now again, with the, uh, the spring interest on the Acer Japonicums, you get those red tassel flowers as well. Maybe my favorite Acer Japonicum, I and mean, that's saying a lot. I might have a new favorite one, but this one's up there. All right, what do we got left here on the table? It looks like we got Osaka Zuki, bro. Uh, last but not least, no one's gonna forget about this one. This one sells out quickly on Mr. Maple. We got Acer Palmatum, Osaka Zuki. Now, Osaka Zuki, these are back in one gallons. They ship for a little bit cheaper than the XL2 gallons because they are smaller. Yeah, smaller. But there's some large one gallons here right now, and they really have some really nice bright red fall color. Yeah, these are probably the average sizes right now for our ones, which are spectacular size one gallons as well. I'm a huge fan of this one's fall color, guys. This one is probably the quintessential red fall color Japanese maple. It is known for being one of the brightest fiery reds of any tree out there in the fall and really rivals any other genus for fall color. I mean, if you ask a hundred nurserymen who grow Japanese maple specifically what their favorite fall color Japanese maple, this is gonna be the clear winner. It's up there a lot. Osaka Zuki, it has a nice spring color too that's often slept on because that fall color is so nice. It can have some kind of pinks to lime greens to some weird shades going on in the early spring. It really kind of shows out a little bit more. We recently did a greens podcast. You'll have to tune in to see where this one ranked on our top 50 green Japanese maples. It was high up on the list because I'm a huge fan of Osakazuki. Now, this one's also exceptionally durable for cold and for heat. This one's gonna work zones five through nine, and it is gonna be an exceptional performer in colder zones. Guys, this is a classic Japanese maple from the Sekihin Benrun list in 1882. Can you spell that for me? S-E-K-I. I ah, forget it. We'll put it in the link below. Osakazuki, Osak it to me for fall color. One of my favorite plants. Awesome trees, y'all. This is only 10 of the 20 trees getting listed today. Make sure you sign Koi. up. Yeah, Koi. And Naguri Nishiki. Make sure you sign Koi. up uh, for our weekly email so you can get the listing of the full 20 trees coming to your email, y'all. We're bringing it to you this Tuesday with some amazing plants. Make sure to shop with us. Thanks for tuning in today. We really appreciate you guys. Koi. Take care. Koi. God bless. Koi. And have a great day.